uh, hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel p talk and in this video uh, we will learn about uh, the architecture of weblogic server okay so before we go ahead in the discussion of the architecture okay let us first understand a user request flow that means when a user access any kind of application or website uh, using any browser okay then what is the flow of uh, of uh, the uh, accessing the application okay and let us see so whenever user uh, uh, access try some applications from the uh, browser okay right so if you are an uh, internet okay then first your request will reach to internet okay and from there when you are accessing a web application because you are using a browser and browser is used uh, to access the web applications right and then that means that application is somewhere deployed or exists on our web server right so then from internet that request will reach to the web server and then that web server will display the website in front of you and then when you are doing a certain kind of a work in the website okay so then maybe your application need to be contact your database for storing certain kind of a data or to retrieve certain kind of a data and in that case your web server which is uh, serving you the web application or web page in front of you it will contact with the database to store or retrieve the data okay uh, but maybe you are you have a certain enterprise applications where you have a lot of uh, business flows business logic are flowing right and uh, because we are in an enterprise world where we have a, a multiple applications multiple stakeholders multiple users across the industry right and then we have a lot of business logic that has been uh, incorporated in our uh, applications okay so that to cater that demand web server is not sufficient so maybe there could be a possibility that you have an application server where you have deployed your complete business logic or the application that you have developed right so web server could be maybe you have architecture where you are uh, serving uh, web server serving you uh, certain web pages okay certain kind of a static uh, web pages and but actual business flow is in the backend application server right so for that one uh, uh, you get the uh, the static website in front of you in the browser from the web server but when you work on a website okay wherever some business logic need to be executed then your web server contact with the application server in the backend okay and then application server again uh, may have a certain kind of a uh, application server specific metadata in your database or maybe your organizational specific data in your database and application again need to be contact with the database to to retrieve or maybe store the data so in a nutshell the the flow is about a user access a web application which is deployed somewhere on the web server and then web server can contact the database for some storing and retrieving the data or maybe web server is contacting your application server for execution of the business logic and then your application server is contacting your uh, database right for saving or uh, maybe retrieving the data okay and this is exactly where how we configured or prepared the architecture in web logic as well okay uh, so now here in this screen you can see that when when i'm talking about a web server this could be a any open source or any any other proprietary web server like you have uh, apache web server you have uh, oracle ohs you have a uh, ibm http server nginx so okay, a lot of web servers are there and in the back end you have multiple application servers are there like oracle web logic server ibm web sphere and then you have a multiple database right now we'll see that how we prepare the architecture when we talk about an enterprise world let us again understand the request flow okay from high availability point of view okay a user access the internet right they try to access some application that is request goes to internet and from internet the request will be served by the web server and when we talk about high availability that means we have a multiple servers are running in parallel and those are running the same set of applications for high availability right if you have a one server and that just get crash you can't able to access your application so to build your application in high availability mode you need multiple servers so if one server get crash so your request can be served by the other servers so let us say that uh, we have three web servers in parallel set up and configured with the same web applications and whenever a user try to access the application from the web server so because we have three web servers in the back end so request can be served from any one of the web server right and similarly for high availability purpose we have a multiple instance of database maybe three right not one but maybe more than one because same concept is there if your one database is running and that is get crashed then your complete data will crash and you will not able your application will not able to contact your database for data 
So you have a multiple database as well in the backend and web server can contact with any of the database instance to save or retrieve the data, right? And all the database instances can be in a single cluster. Okay, and again, for example, if your web server, as, as we have discussed in the previous slide, uh, maybe your web server need to contact with the application server for executions of the business logic or business flows, then you could have a multiple application servers as well in backend and your web servers can contact any of the application server in the backend, right, for execution of business flow. And then again, your application server need to contact your database for retrieve and saving the data. So it can contact any instance of your database in the backend, right, to retrieve or store your uh, data. But now when we say about, um, okay, let us see again, that is a cluster, okay. Now, similarly, we have a cluster in our database and same way we have a cluster in our application server as well. If you know about the web logic, then you have a web logic cluster as well, where we group multiple managed servers together. Those are running the similar kind of services for high availability purpose, right? So now these standing bars in orange color that you are seeing there, okay. There is a specific term for that one because uh, if you see from a starting from internet, you have a three web servers. So if some user is trying to access the uh, any website, okay. So if there are three web servers in the backend, then which which uh, web server will serve the user request? Similarly, here you can able to see one user, but there are millions or billions of customers are accessing the website altogether. Maybe if you take example of Facebook, then billions of users are trying to access the website altogether. And then maybe in the back end, if there are three web servers of Facebook, then which web server which will serve the request of each user. Similarly, if your web server is trying to contact the application server, then from which web server request will go to which application server, right? And then from which application server request will go to which instance of the backend database, right? That means for that, we need a technology to distribute the request between multiple instances that is called a load balancer. That means you need a certain kind of a load balancer which can balance the load, which is called an actual request from the users to the different components in your architecture, right? So let us see the architecture again. A user is trying to access some website from the internet. First, the request will go to a load balancer, okay? So there are separate, uh, load balances are there, some of the hardware load balancers, some of the software load balancers, okay? And from there, suppose that you have a three backend node, node one, node two, and node three web servers, then that load balancer will load balance the request between your three node, one, two, and three. For example, a user is trying to access the website, the request will go to node one. If second user is trying to website, the request will go to node two. And if third user is trying to website, it will go to node three, right? So this is the work of load balancer to load balance the request between different uh, backend servers. Okay, so this is one of the algorithm which we call as a round robin, okay, where your load balancer can route the request one by one to all backend servers. But based on the features of load balancer, there could be certain more uh, algorithms are also there for load balancer request between the different servers. Okay, now suppose in backend you have a three application servers running on node one, two, and three, then your web servers configured to send the request to any of the application server. For example, node one is running a web server. It can send requests to any of the backend application server to one, two, and three. Similarly, node two web server is also configured to send requests to any of the backend application server. And your node three is also configured to send requests to any of the backend server. That means requests from any of the web server can go to any of the application server for proper load balancing, okay? So the web server, the requests are getting distributed from the load balancer, but to backend application server, the requests are getting distributed from your web server, okay? And all three application servers are in cluster and suppose in backend you have a three database nodes, that means your application server also need to contact your database, so that means each application node can contact any of the database node for high availability purpose and proper load balancing. So if the request is coming to node one, then node one can contact any of the database instances in the backend. Similarly, if the request is coming to node two, the request can be goes to any of the instance of database in the backend. And same way, if the request is on the node three, then from node three, it can go to any of the node in the backend, okay? And this is called the concept of high availability, scalability, load balancing, and failover, right? So high availability means you have a multiple instances of 
web server, you have multiple instances of application servers, you have multiple instances of uh, database instances. So any if any of the instances is getting crashed, then you have other servers to serve the request that is called a high availability. Scalability in the sense that means you are all the, the, uh, the nodes are there in a cluster, okay? And in future, if your load is getting in, increased, Maybe you have a today you have a customer base of thousand and tomorrow you you have a customer base of two thousand and you need to scale your application. In that case, you can easily add a few more nodes. Maybe you can have your four nodes of web servers. You can increase from three to four. Similarly, you can increase the application server from three to four, four to five, or maybe ten twenty. And then similarly, you can increase your database node as well. So you can scale your system based on your future demands. Load balancing is as I said that you have to. Uh, the request that is coming to your web server, to application server, to database, it can be load balanced to each and every node to serve the request. And failover is a concept where if any of your node goes down, then all the sessions data, those are connected to that node that need to be failover to some other node. Okay, for example, a user accessed some website and he's doing or she's doing certain kind of a stuff and the session is connected with node one web server and then in the back end it is connected with node one application server. And at that time we support that a node one of application server get crashed or maybe web server get crashed. Okay, in that case, all the work that the user have done and maybe it the user have certain kind of a data in their shopping cart or in, in maybe in their uh, in the application okay so that data along with the user session need to be transferred to the running node that is called a failure concept so when we talk about the benefit of load balancer there are a lot of benefit of load balancer but we talk about two major benefits of here one is the ssl termination so ssl termination is what is i'm sure you are aware about the ssl technology or if you are not then just a brief on that uh, ssl is a, a secure socket layer that means when you access some website okay you um, uh, might have noted that when you access a website, it convert automatically to HTTP to HTTPS, right? That is, it is a secure website. That means whenever you access a website, which is HTTPS, that means whatever the communication that you are doing with that website, it is get secure. It is get encrypted when your data is transferred over the public internet, okay? But for that, you have to uh, buy a certain kind of a certi uh, uh, certificates from certain authorities to, to make your website secure, that is called an SSL certificate, okay? So when you have an enterprise business where you have a multiple web servers, multiple application servers, load balancers, okay? So certificates can be configured at application server level, certificates can be configured at web server level, certificate can be configured at load balancer level, okay? But specifically in an enterprise world, you are all the uh, application servers, database servers, and sometimes your web server node also, exist inside the private network of an organization and then load balancer is the front end which act as a intrigate intrigate for your all the requests from the internet so all the requests to an inter uh, to the private network comes from the load balancer and the request will goes out from the load balancer that means load balancer is an entry point for a private network so as a best practice okay and to save the cost the ssl is configured at load balancer level and then from there, all the traffic inside it is a non-SSL. That means from HTTPS to it will be HTTP communication inside the web server to application server to database and from database to back to application server and to web server and the response back to your load balancer. That means you are all the communication inside your private network is not need to be secured. So we don't really configure SSL inside your private network. The SSL is configured only at the entry level, that is at the load balancer level, and that is called the SSL termination. That means you are configuring the SSL at the entry point, at, that means at the load balancer. Okay, and based on the kind of applications that you are running, running and the kind of a security that your organization is needed, you can have a uh, SSL configured at load balancer, SSL can be configured at the web server, and it can be configured at the application server level as well. Okay, and the second benefit is about session stickiness. Okay, that is called session persistence. That means whenever a user access certain kind of application, okay, from the browser, it gets connected with some of the backend server. Okay, suppose that a user access the website, okay, uh, amazon.in, okay, and then that request from internet to goes to load balancer and from there that user get connected with the node one of web server and from web server, it get connected with the node one of uh, application server. 
right? So whenever that uh, user access that website, Amazon.in, maybe that user is searching searching for certain kind of a products that means his search history is there maybe he has or she has added certain items in their shopping cart so till that user is accessing as work on that website okay that that means it is connected with certain backend node and the example that i am giving maybe it is connected with the node one right and suppose that there are 10 or 20 items added in his shopping cart okay and then he's about to check out and then suddenly in the backend node one get crash where it is connected so in that case, uh, you have to make sure, you have to ensure that uh, the user will not get any kind of a failure message. User will not suffer with any loss of their data. Maybe he has an, uh, wasted uh, a half an hour in searching of certain products and added certain kind of a product in shopping cart and suddenly application server get crashed and then everything would crash for the user as well. This is not a good practice, right? So for that one, uh, you have to ensure that uh, you have to uh, fail over the data of the user to a different application server, right? So that means when the user is connected with a backend uh, server, okay, that that user has certain kind of a session data as well when he is working on a website, right? And when the session data is there, okay, so till that user is accessing the website and doing any kind of a stuff, and the initially when the session was connected with the backend node one, then every time the user is trying to access or doing any kind of a stuff on the website everything will be served by the node one, okay? So as I said, when we talk about the load balancing at the load balancer, the load balancer send the request uh, in a round robin line, first to node one, second to node two, and second to third to node three. And if a user is trying to do a certain kind of a stuff where his request is getting in and out multiple times from the load balancer, okay? So every time till the user is connected, the user session is active, okay? So the user will get routed to the same node. If it is connected to node one, then for every kind of a request from the same session, the user will get connected with the node one. And that is called a stickiness. The user will get connected to the same backend node because it has a session data, right? And if you will not enable that one, that means in that case, you have to maintain the user session data across all of your web or application servers. Because as I said, an user who is accessing the website may have multiple kind of a session data, right? And if you are transferring that user to multiple backend web servers and application servers, and initially if the user is connected with node one and his session data is on node one, and then again, you are routing him to node two or node three, then the session data, which is node one is not with the node two and node three, then the user will not able to see the data again when he will try to hit the uh, website or maybe he will move from one page to another, another page. Okay, so in that case, uh, you have a two option, either you can use a stickiness where you can allow the users to connect with a single backend server till his session alive, okay? And in second case, you can allow user request to be served by any of the backend node, but in that case, you have to ensure that user session data is getting replicated across all the nodes and so that the users can connect to any of the backend node and it will not suffer with the loose loss of their session data. Right, and this is all about the architecture of WebLogic Server. And when we talk about the widely used software, so web server, we have a Apache web server, which is an open source web server. You know about Microsoft IIS, Oracle OHS, IBM HTTP server, Nginx, and then Tomcat. And Tomcat is work as an application server as well for small set of applications, not at the enterprise level. And when we talk about the load balancer, then from Oracle, you have an LBAS, which is an OCI Oracle Cloud load balancer. Then uh, you have solution from Big IP, F5, FortiGate, Camp, Redware, Elton, Eltion, AVI Vantage, and Citrix ADC. These are certain kind of a, uh, load balancers which route the request to web servers. And when we talk about application servers, you have Oracle WebLogic application server. You have IBM WebSphere, Red Hat, JBoss, which is a wildfly name as an open source of JBoss, Apache Tomcat for small enterprise business, and then you have a glass piece from the Oracle. And when we talk about database, okay, so the screen is written as web server, but uh, it is a database, okay. So you can consider this web server as a database there, and then you have Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. These are certain uh, uh, mostly used database servers. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.